rightful ruler. Most of us don't know that because we don't know the, how interlopers interlope. And as the son of Zeus, the son of Enlil, he is exercising the jurisdiction of the so-called God of Earth. Right? So now they use these tools when Constantine comes to power, he sees what they call cults. Anything that's uh, not Christian Judaism or Islam is classified as pagan cults. It don't mean anything wrong with them, but the um, energy put behind the expression in the English language made us believe that a cult is a bad thing. It made us think that a pagan was something bad. A pagan just means you don't believe none of this nonsense they telling us. Yeah. And that you know that there is a spiritual connection to the ethers and to the earth. And if you recognize that, that's going to uh, open up the path of life for you. But if you deny it, you're going to struggle trying to find your way through life by having obstacle after obstacle slap you in the face. Being aware of that, you use it to control the people. You keep them so divided that there's no peace in his own home, let alone in his society or his city. And as long as that perpetual state of conflict there, there's a God and a devil. There's a right and a wrong. But these are just two acidity scale opposites. Right? From acid to alkaline which is also from order to chaos, right? From efficiency to entropy. The entropy or the mass loss of energy beyond what's being expended is in the struggle in the day-to-day -day life, more so in the one who's following the path and he's living at the highest echelons of life. But nobody want to teach the common man because if everybody was living at the highest echelons, it would alter the reality and it would erase the concept of hell from the reality because heaven would be on earth. So they took these scrolls and they passed them from the Greeks to the Romans. In Greece, the goddess Helen was who the culture, Hellenistic culture, was named after. The name Hell. But when Rome appointed a god named Helen, it was a man. That's called the severing of the head of Medusa, which is to take off and decapitate the divine feminine and replace her with the feminine masculine, or artificial a fake, yeah. a fraud, right? <clears throat> something that looked like something, but it ain't even close. So they sent us the Statue of Liberty to tell us what was going on. <clears throat> we never knew that it was a drag queen until we seen the Statue of Lucifer. Nice. <clears throat> the big Statue of Lucifer is older than the Statue of Liberty. The only difference is the Statue of Liberty has a dress on. Okay. The face is the same. Yeah. Right? So they're telling us that we chasing drag queens, meaning men that's in women's positions, holding women's possessions hostage. What are the birthright of the women? The birthright of the women is to control the mitochondria, which corrects the anomalies in DNA over time. But before it can correct an anomaly, they're adding so many new anomalies, it's extending their time to be here by creating of chimeras that look like humans. They show it to us in those movies where they use in all these different parts of animal DNA in order to in increase the intelligence of the human. Never knowing that the human is the most intelligent of all the creatures, and that's why we humans. 
So we don't need other animals' intelligence. We need access to frequencies. That takes us back to the totem systems. To destroy the totem system, they instituted the flag system. The flag system is adopted from admiralty and maritime of the high seas and misapplied on the land because it's a different set of rules from water to land. Because the laws of land does not control water when you try to apply them to water. Dirt and water don't behave the same under scientific examination. So therefore, the one who's applying the law of the water and overriding the law of the land is the invader. And the one who gave them permission is who we needed to find, which we call him the Pope. And we needed to know who financed them, and we traced them back to Switzerland, and they classified as world banks and international monetary funds. Yeah. And now we need to know who gave the royal decree that took us to Buckingham Palace, and that's why the crest fell off the gate. That's when Lindsay really died. Because it was the breaking of the crest that reveals the breaking of the crescent, which is the moon magic, which is the spell of sleep, which is the Islam spell. Oh. Yeah. So this is why you got to do some salat all day. As long as you're doing salat all day, you can't live. You can't live a productive life, and every time you get in the middle of a project, you got to go stop and kiss some guy's ass. Yeah. So it's, it puts you into a dream state. That's Kingu. You always dreaming about what life could be like, but you never go about doing things to make life be like you dreaming. So you live in another person's dream, and this is why your life is a nightmare, because it's not your dream. If you choose to live your own dream, then your own dream, you can't have a nightmare. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, because now everything is beautiful around you. You coming from the true place, the place of the love, the unconditional love. And let the love light shine. It's like a lighthouse on the, on the harbor. What do Pharaoh mean? The light of the house. But the gender term of the word is feminine. She is the light of the house, wherever she may be, because she is the light in my heart. I don't have to take my woman to war. When I go to war, my woman in my heart with me. And she know that I'm going to fight until there ain't no fight left in me. <laughs> so it's all the balancing of the two energies and the opposites and the rising to prominence and power. What we see written in hieroglyphics is the holy drama. The holy drama tells you the, the blueprint. But if you're not an architect, you don't know how to read blueprints. Therefore, how are you going to construct anything? Right? But once you read the blueprint, you can look around, and then you can take the true blue and imprint it up on the reality in order to bring about the rise of the new Messiah, which means the blessed ones, the anointed ones, the ones smeared with the oil, the gator oil, the crocodile oil, the Sobek priest. Right? Mm -hmm. Because that's how you determine who the rightful heirs was. Over time, it gave way from the elixir of the oil of the crocodile to the oil of the whale to the olive oil. Right? Color and it's the, it's the um, replica of the thing that captures the energy in the mind of the gods to manifest that this is the right one. Right? Mm -hmm. So we learn by observation of how things are going to see what's right and what's wrong. And if you're standing in the path of righteousness, you're going to always see on one side the wrong and the other side the right. So see with them. But them. you got to you got to walk the middle path to see them both. Okay. See when we speak about religion now, you see some of the practices 
within religion. I'll give an example. Um, fasting, you know. So not just fasting, there's something, you know, some don't eat pork. Um, there's quite a few things. So see the positive side of things. Fasting, they say it's quite good. It's good for us all to fast at certain points, you know, cleanse ourselves and stuff. So see some of the positive practices. Is that what attract, would you say that's what attracted people? Like certain things that were familiar. How did you get a bunch yeah, of people? Yeah. yeah so they what they was using, even in the stories that they're telling, they yeah. telling the stories and then they mixing the story up. Okay. Because I wonder how would you get a bunch of people, so many people into I'm, this? I'm, I, I can tell you exactly. Because once you know how it works, it doesn't work on you anymore. Yeah. So this is how it works. They took the stories from the hieroglyphs and reworked them. You have something called genetic memory. This, this, all it is is accumulated DNA code that goes back to your father's ancestor. But all of the ancestors between you and that one, one of them is sending the children out to collect the knowledge and they all culminate when he come back to, to get the downloads from all of the other ancestors. Yeah. Right? So it started yeah. off, it started off at a point, then it's a divergence, then it's a convergence, and then it's a unison. All of the ancestors collectively will choose a descendant to reveal the information that the collective family lines is fed into the bloodstream through DNA data. Yeah. All we doing is upgrading and updating the avatar by exchanging information and using reproductive processes in order to pass that information down until it's time to act on it. So see like Noble Drew Ali, for example, because of a look at, even though Islam might have been like 1,400 years ago, I look and like see certain things, um, like see with Noble Drew Ali, um, Elijah Muhammad. So I understand that it, it became a black liberation movement, but at the same time, there's a lot of things tied in with Islam and possibly with Noble Drew Ali, maybe there's other things from the Bible that he's connected with or... I don't know a whole lot about Noble Drew Ali. I'm just aware that he established the Moorish Science Temple. And some say he, he was an influencer of people like Farad Muhammad. So, so he, was he, a con he was a contemporary of Farad Muhammad. He was a contemporary of W.E. Du Bois. He was a contemporary of Marcus Garvey. They was all doing work at the same time, but doing different work. Yeah. Sweet Daddy Grace, Father Divine. But here's the thing about Noble Drew Ali. Noble Drew Ali started off, he said, as a merchant marine. That means that he was traveling harbors around the world working as a longshoreman. Then when he came home, he, after a couple years, he went to New Jersey, and, and as he was about to go through his tribal right, he had to find out who was holding the people hostage. When he went into this place called the Moorish Zionist Temple of Jews, he discovered the use of the Babylonian magic system to oppress the people. He created the Moorish Science Temple to counteract what they was doing and to expose to the rest of the chiefs who may not be alive yet, who's behind it. Once you know who's behind it, you study their methodology of how they move and how they operate. And then you look to determine if you see any of these things, how they move, manifesting in the society that you're living in that would either prove or disprove their involvement in what's taking place. Okay. And that means... When he used the structure, the original structure or the Moorish Science Temple was a whole different jurisdiction than the modern Moorish Science Temple. Yeah, yeah, I was going, yeah, the modern, yeah. 
Right now, under the jurisdiction of the original Morris Science Temple, anybody who had a nationality card, the Grand Sheik would come in and he you can't try him in your court of law. He's not in your jurisdiction. He's in ours. Somewhere along the line, somebody crossed Noble Drew, Drew Ali out and put them under the jurisdictional authority of the oppressor. This also caused him to be murdered in the process. Right. Okay, now, at the same time this is going on, there's some people that's accusing um, Marcus Garvey of defrauding them through the mail. All this going on at the same time wow. in 1920s. Wow. Garvey, I mean, right. Big time, that. Yeah. Remember, they exiled Garvey. I think it was 1926. They murdered Noble Drew Ali in 1929, and the stock market crashed. Do the math. Yep. They created the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. Right? No, that was the. Uh, uh, not the Federal Reserve Act. That was the... Yeah, that was the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. Right? Yeah, but, this but gave the, the rise the, to the to the central say, bank. I'm just going to say 1930, around them times, was, was this the time when um, the stock markets crashed, was it? The stock market crashed in 1929, the same year Noble oh, okay. was murdered. Right, okay. Uh, Massafire Muhammad appeared in Detroit in 1930, one year after Noble Drew Ali died. Now, you got to pay attention to the timing. Definitely, yeah. Now, um, Claire Muhammad in 1929 is sending her eldest boys to go drag a drunken Elijah Muhammad off the train tracks. Right? And while he's recovering in 1930, a silk salesman come to his door. Fire Muhammad. God in the right. person he called himself, isn't it? If, right. If you continue what you're saying, but if you could explain the God in the person from your perspective, but you know, continue what you're saying, but we could add that on as well. It doesn't mean what it sounds like it means because it's a Masonic code. Okay, okay. Okay. Because we don't know the language they speak, the language that we speak is going to be our default to what they're saying. Okay. So what did you what's what does he what does he mean by he's he got came with a message? He came with a message directly from the one who's the God of the earth. A direct message, right? Which makes God come in the person. Not, not the person is God. The person carries the message from God. Okay. Right? And the reverence given confuses the masses as to the person's purpose, which allows them to go unmolested through history to continue to carry the same message that that God told him to deliver before he came to Elijah Muhammad. Now, when you realize the codes, then you see the flip. Now, when you when you raise the white man to deific status, you're really raising the black woman on the other side of the town. So if you look at where they first nation of Islam temple number one was, it was on one side of town and across town you had something being formed called the Shrine of the Black Madonna. The mirror flip flips the code. The Shrine is the Black Madonna, and the only person that know who the Black Madonna is is the Chosen Son. But he's chosen by genetics. And as the genetics become active, it allows him to see the mirror reflection. The Black Madonna is Claire Muhammad. 
right? Yeah. She's the one who turned on Elijah's love light, which activated his abstract knowledge brilliance. But he's teaching Islam. Yes. But he's teaching it his way. He's not teaching it like they do in the Shia or in the Sunnah or in the Ahmadiyya. He's teaching it as in Elijah Muhammad's Islam. Okay. Why is he doing that? that on this ask. land called the Americas, anybody can bring any teachings from anywhere in the world. But the teacher who teaches it has to put an element of himself in it or his tribal tradition in it in order for the other tribes to know 